Okay, so this morning if you've got a Bible and you want to follow me, I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of Luke and uh, chapter 6. And I'm going to be starting at verse 30. Luke 6. And um, starting at verse 30. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thanks have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thanks have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thanks have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the evil. But ye therefore... Sorry, be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Okay, the words there, of course, the words of the Lord Jesus. And um, what I wanted to call my sermon this morning is challenging our preconceptions. And um, I think when you come to the Bible for the first time, when you first become a Christian... And you, you start to read the Bible, if you're like me, you assume you're coming to it with an open mind. You think, you know, I'm just going to read what it says and, you know, God will speak to me. And that's true. But we also come with a lot of baggage, I think, when we come to the words of the Bible. And we're sort of unaware of it, really, that our lives, our views of things have been shaped by the society we live in, by the education system that we've been through, by our parents, by the media, by friends, even by, uh, dare I say it, bad preaching. You know, all these things shape our view of the things that Jesus says and we come to them with this kind of baggage. And what Jesus particularly does, but what the Word of God in general does, is it starts to challenge those preconceived ideas, those preconceived ideas about morality, about righteousness, about the roles of men and women, you know what I'm talking about, all these kind of things. It starts to be challenged when you start to honestly deal with the Word of God. And the reason why I've uh, taken this, these verses here in Luke is I think this particularly shows, uh, there are many other places we could have chosen, but this I think particularly shows how Jesus challenges our view of ourselves. All right, so I'm going to make uh, uh, three kind of points during this sermon, I'm going to expand upon them. Uh, but the first point I want to make is the use of words, certain words in the Bible. And there's a word that occur occurs here. Um, it occurs four times in about these uh, seven verses. And it's a bit of a favourite word for, for some open air preachers. And it's uh, uh, definitely not a favourite word of some ministers and it's the word sinners okay sinners and uh, you'll find what happens today in many churches is that they don't like to use the word sinner because well it, frankly it sounds like a term of abuse doesn't it you're you're what you're saying when you say to somebody you're a sinner is you're you're saying in effect things that you are doing are wrong that the, the certain ways you live your life that are wrong before God. And so it's a very extreme word, sinners, isn't it? And so you'll find in churches today people 
a lot of people don't like to use that word and they'll use words like <coughs> the unchurched you heard that word you know we've got some people coming in who are unchurched okay that means sinner <laughs> they're unchurched when I first became a Christian they used to talk about strangers they'd say um, sounds like sinister doesn't it they'd say strangers to the church those who are strangers to church those who are strangers to the word of God or those who are strangers to God yeah they're talking about sinners but they don't want to use the word because straight away you're kind of making a judgment you're showing people that you're saying God disapproves of the way you live your life of certain things that you may do and it, it this trend, if you like, for, for softening words, for changing words, has even entered into uh, Bible translations. And I don't want to sound like a harp on about this, but the NIV, if you read this passage in the NIV, wherever it says sinners, they put inverted commas around it. Can you believe that? Sinners? No, it, it is there. They are sinners. That's why Jesus uses the word. He uses the term. Because he's talking about sinners. He's talking about people uh, who do not believe in God. Who do not love God. And who do not follow God. So that's what he's talking about. He talks about sinners. Now, something interesting that I've found is that people who reject the gospel and reject Jesus Christ. They don't like to have that label sinner. They refuse it. They don't want it. But people who become Christians are all too ready to have that label and say, yeah, that's me, that's me, I'm a sinner. Because they've come to an understanding, yes, all have sinned, all have fallen short of the glory of God. And say, oh yeah, well that's true. And that makes sense to me, perfect sense, therefore I'm a sinner. And you get people making statements like, well, I was a sinner, I am a sinner. But God doesn't mind because, listen, he, he's gracious. He understands me. And I just want to point out here, I'm going to deal with some preconceived ideas uh, 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 and thoughts that people have. And if you think like this, or if you've thought like this in the past, I want you to feel condemned about it. Because when, when you, you, you mature as a Christian, as you start to grow as a Christian, it's about learning if on the first day you became a Christian, you said, well, that's it, I know everything now. Nobody can teach me anything new. Well, then you've become unteachable. You have to be ready. If someone can show you something from the Bible, you have to be open to say, okay, well, I might need to change my opinion about this. You know, that's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you're weak. It just means that you're ready to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you and you're ready to understand what the scriptures are saying. And I want to challenge you this morning and say this, that, you know, the term sinner... You can search the Bible all the way through and you will not find that term applied to a believer. Now you might say, well, just a minute. What about the Apostle Paul? Doesn't he say that he is the chief of sinners? Yes, that's correct. And when we get verses like that that seem to contradict other things that the Bible says, then we need to look at them in context, don't we? We need to say, well, what's the context Paul's talking about? And you can look for this for yourself. I haven't got time to do it this morning. You can look for yourself. 1 Timothy chapter 1. It's where he's dealing with this, this whole question here. And the context is that Paul gives a list of people whom he calls sinners. Or some translations will say lawbreakers. Yeah, a lawbreaker is a sinner because you're transgressing God's law. And Paul lists whoremongers, liars, murderers. And then he comes to himself referring to his former practices and he says I was a blasphemer a persecutor and injurious that is causing injury to others persecuting God's people even vehemently persecuting them uh, so he was a persecutor of Christians and of course Jesus when he met him the risen Christ on the road to Damascus Jesus says uh, I am he whom you are persecuting so in that sense Paul could say, I'm the chief of sinners, I'm, I'm persecuting Christ, so, so great are my sins, I'm a murderer, and so on. But he is not referring to himself now as a saved individual. He's saying, I changed. 